What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode 25 of our FC Social Montbellier Let's Play here in Football Manager 2018. Hopefully you guys are good as you can see the 22nd of January. Today live comp double header. We're going to take off on Monaco and Lyon. Yes, it's going to be a big episode for us. Two teams you are ahead of us in the league. Of course, starting off with the team Monaco, who have only lost one game all year. Not going to be easy, but hopefully we can give them a good run in. Since we are last here, there has been a fair few games. Of course, last episode was against Dijon FCO. Since then, as you can see, we've played six games. I'm not going to go through all of these in too much detail, just because, well, we have two live comms today. But the first game we had was against Priest. As you can see here, we won 3-0, a very good performance. Also good to see Calavera, our right-back, get a goal in this game. And of course, a second 3-0 victory in a row. Priest, of course were promoted with us last year they currently sit rock bottom of the league they have done atrociously to be honest whilst we have been soaring high they have been setting a record for just re record defeat. I think they lost their first 10 games in a row I think it was the worst ever start for a team in a European league ever um we didn't really help them here with the 3-0 win but a good result for us and following it on from that we were at home to PSG and yes this was a big game for us really you know a bit of a test I set up with our more defensive system with two defensive midfielders Panna and Fuchs the men given the defensive duty and uh, well for the first half we largely kept PSG quiet but early on in the second half Cavani got a goal for them however Dukas replied immediately six minutes later sloppy defending by PSG we took the one opportunity really that came our way but all in all this was a good little point you know 1-1 one, one against PSG you look at the stats it was very kind of one-sided but neither team had a clear-cut chance we really did shut down PSG and limit their opportunities to long-range shots which was really really pleasing and of course to get a point against them gives me a little bit of hope that going into today's games albeit both are going to be away from home to Monaco and Lyon that we maybe can make something happen Anyway, the next game we had was against Gungam. 2-0, oh sorry, not 2-0, 2-2 two draw this one. A bit of a classic. Uh, we fought back from initially conceding in the 15 minute. Uh, 15th minute. Dukas got a goal. jean do Fuchs got a goal for us early on in the second half. However, uh, Grigore got a goal for them. Made it 2-2 with not long left. All in all, though, this was a really even game. We struggled to hit the target, although when we did, you know, often it was hit in the back of the net. Um, I feel like a draw was probably the fairest result across this game. Anyway, following on from that, we took on Lille in the French Cup. A 2-1 win after extra time there. Good little performance. Keeps us going on in the Cup. It was an own goal. Wasn't that all that convincing a result, but we will take it. We then took on Ren. As you can see, it finished 1-1. Um, they got a very late equaliser in this game, actually. Ricardo Martin scored for us in the 21st minute. We looked like we were going to get all three points somewhat against the run of play. However, late on, Boyk, uh, that's definitely not how you say his name, but it's how we're going to go with it, came on off the bench and broke our hearts. And in the 88th minute, they grabbed an equaliser. Anyway, the most recent game we had against Toulouse, a 1-0 victory. A great little result there, really. You can see Dukas, who else was it going to be with the goal, really? But we shut them down for large spells, made some changes early on. It kind of worked out in our favour, actually. Pote on off the bench, Dougie Boy got the assist for Dukas' goal. And uh, yeah, we got a deserved victory in that game, although I kind of would have liked a few more goals in our favour. There has been a little bit going on in the transfer window. Of course, we are in January. Um, I've signed two younger players Again, just really to add to our growing academy, you can see here we have Meher Kamel Mehmet. Yes, that is a mouthful. Uh, you can see German international at under-20 level. Um, I actually found him because he was playing in the Turkish under-21 squad. You can see he got eight goals in six games for Turkey's under-21 squad. At the age of 17, he was at the time. We brought him in for a measly fee from a non-league German side. £16,000 paid. You can see looking at him, 20 determination is obviously really exciting, but that finishing and first touch, both being 16, is superb. Looks like a great little player, and to get him in for such a small fee is great. Obviously, his goal scoring record for the Turkey under 21 squad was particularly impressive with eight goals in six games. Hopefully, um, he can continue to develop and become a player who can bang in goals for us. And while speaking of impressive goal records at international level, the other player we brought in was Austin Ibrahim, another Nigerian. There's been something about Nigerians here at Socho so far. As you can see here, one appearance for the Nigerian national team, but he grabbed two goals in that one game. Good little player, this guy, 18 years old. Um, I don't know how much potential he's got to fulfil, but his current ability is very good. Very determined as well, which is great to see. Physically, fantastic in the air. 14 heading, 15 jump in reach a little bit different to some of the other younger attacking kind of prospects we've got in the team in terms of he's a bit more physical hopefully he can continue to develop on the outs we've had a few players go out on loan the most notable i think is actually Veroslav Vasec he has gone on loan to Clermont in the league below us 
He's going to be playing in Ligue 2 as a regular first-team player for them. This guy, though, 17 years old, only just turned 17. Regular international in the Czech under-21 squad. You can see here, fairly professional personality. Has already improved during his loan spell. And I feel like he's ready to play Ligue 2 football. His personality is great, so he doesn't need tutoring at this point, even though he's only 17. And, well, hopefully he can really make a name for himself. A very technically gifted striker who definitely has a big future in our first team, I feel like. So anyway, that's what's been going on in terms of transfers. Today, we go into our first game here. It's going to be against Monaco. In terms of the team news, you can see here, it looks pretty good, all things considering. No real injuries to speak of, which is good. Uh, in terms of the team we're going to go with, I think we're going to play Prevo in goal today. Of course, Sunday West has joined us, and there is definitely going to be a squabble, I feel like, between West and Prevo for the goalkeeping spot. But right now, um, I'm kind of rotating the two a little still. So we'll go with Prevo in goal. The back four is going to be Pendant, Ruiz, Diara and Dalot. Nothing too crazy going on there. In the midfield, it's going to be Fuchs and Gregory Knight. Moroni is going to start out on the right for us. Trincao on the left. Martin and Ducasse down the middle. Palmy wants to play Panna ahead of Fuchs. Now I think about it. I'm going to do it. I'm sorry, Fuchs has kind of lost his spot in the first team to Panna, which is kind of interesting because obviously it's the Mazala role they're competing for. Fuchs a little bit more kind of defensive, I guess. And whilst Panna perhaps on paper is, well, better in some areas, but certainly not stand out kind of better, um, Panna just gets goals. It's just what Panna does. It's Panna things. Hashtag just Panna things. That should be a thing. But um, yeah, we're going to give him the nod today. Part of me is wondering if I want to play the counter-attacking system today, however. Um, we could go with this, which is probably a pretty good setup, to be honest. In fact, we'll swatch Panna and Knight around. I think we will go with this to start today's game. It's what we played against PSG. It worked quite well for us there. Of course, if you're a long-term watcher of my channel, you'll know that I really hate playing on the counter. I love to just play on the attack constantly. I feel like relying on your defence is a recipe for disaster, but... I think today we're going to mix things up. You can see their team, very strong. They've signed Ruli, they've signed Van Dijk, uh, they've got uh, Herrera, Firmino. They've got some nice players they've added to this team, Monaco, in the first few seasons. So they're not going to be easy to beat by any means. Let's see how we can get on here. Um, I'm going to tell the players, we've got nothing to lose here. Show everyone what you're capable of. They're not a fan of that team talk. Let's see what we can do here. It's going to be a big game for us against Monaco. Of course, you might have noticed through our recent form, you know, we've not really been that convincing. We have remained unbeaten, but three draws in our last five league games is something that we can't really afford to continue doing. We have been quite fortunate, actually, in the fact that the teams below us have equally been slipping up a lot against one another. It's been a very hectic Christmas period, um, which has kind of worked in our favour in some ways because we have quite a good rotation policy here. Anyway, we need to defend this here. Kiete, Bolde, or is it Bolde, Kiete? I've always said it the other way around, but it doesn't matter. He's got the goal for them. Not an ideal start, if we're being honest. It was from a set piece. It was a little bit sloppy. Something off the training ground, perhaps. Um, but yeah, Tielemans just tees it up to Bolde Keita, who just, well, gives a little give and go. Finds himself in a lot of space at the edge of the box, and mate, should Prevo do better at his near post there? I don't want to call him out, but I feel like it wasn't the best goalkeeping effort. I won't criticise him. I'll, I'll be kind. But yeah, let's see how we can get on here. Virgil van Dijk at centre-back for them. So in this FM universe, didn't go to Liverpool, as, as I... As a little puff, and I hope he might do in real life. Instead, he's become part of this very scary Monaco side. We're on the attack again. I mean, am I going to be wanting to switch to attacking immediately? They've just hit the post. And we somehow managed to just about scramble it clear. Hmm. Do I want to change things up after 25 minutes? They're having just too much of the ball. I think we need to try and take the game to them, as risky as it is. They've had like 30% of possession. It's far too high. Uh, oh, sorry, we've had 30% of possession. In fact, we've had less than that. I feel like we're just giving them too much respect here. And, uh, well, we're going to go and try and be attacking us. Firmino hits it. I thought that was about to whiz into the top corner. What a free kick, uh, well, what a free kick routine that could have been if it had flown in. I mean, 35 minutes gone. The best thing you can say is that both teams have only had two shots on target. The bad news for us is we're really struggling to get a foothold in this game and we've not looked like scoring. But at 1 0, we've still got a chance, and at half time, an opportunity, I feel like, to get a little bit shouty shouty with the players, you know, get a little bit in their faces, get a little bit angry. Decass on a 6.2. We need better than that, mate. We need better than that. Show me something else. Can we have a better second half? That's what we need, you know, going with the pretty standard team talk of just. 
getting all assertive in their faces. Let's see if we can try and have a better second half here. I mean, Monaco, they have superior quality to us. It's always going to be difficult. You know, in the early stages, obviously, we played the counter-attacking system. I feel like it worked against PSG because they weren't so keen to keep hold of the ball. They were, you know, determined to be direct attacking and press up high, whereas this Monaco side just seemed quite happy to keep the ball. And while it's another set piece to the edge of the box, we need to deal with it here. Bolde Kieta, surely not again. It is again. It's, a, it's very similar. Defensively from the corner... Not ideal from us. And, well, we look like we're going to lose this game against Monaco. They have only lost one game all season. But it might apply a little bit of extra pressure on us going into the next game of this episode, which is against Lyon in just three or four days' time. There's not a lot of respite for us. And it's going to be a big game for us to try and, well, get bounce back from this, whatever this has been. Ducasse has been awful. I'm going to make some tactical changes, I think. Got a set piece here. Maroney to Dicas, who can't win it in the air there. He's not exactly known for his aerial prowess. Now, Hervin Lozano, I assume that's Lozano, as in the Mexican Lozano. He's very good in football manager. Dispossessed Dicas. I've slated you all game. Prove me wrong. Prove why I should keep you on the pitch. He beats his man. He slots it straight into Ruli's hands. Right. Knight hasn't had a great performance there. Martin's not had a great performance. I mean... Let's bring in Almeida, and I'm going to go for the triple change with half an hour left. I'm bringing on Dougie Pote. It feels like whenever I bring in Dougie, he instantly gets injured, and he's usually our last sub. Let's hope that isn't the case today. I mean, we're still in this game theoretically, and we've got a set piece here at the edge of the box. Panna, crunching tackle by Sidibe, but, well, fair play. He keeps it in as well, and now it's back up to Lozano. Can we force him wide? No, he finds space in behind. Using that pace of his, the Mexican winger to Andre Silva, who just hammers it in. And unfortunately, in our desperation to get forward and try and get a goal, we've conceded again. And it's been a clinical masterclass, really, by Monaco. You look at it here, they've not had a clear-cut chance as such. Just two really nice finishes in the first half by uh, Bolde Keita. And then in the second half, they have, well, they, they've just put us to the slaughter on the counter there. You know, we've committed men forward in that attack. And it's not really worked out for us. And this is at the risk of getting embarrassing as we do. We do get the, the compulsory injury in football manager that you get when you make a change. I feel like in reality at this point, I just want the game to end. You know, nothing nothing else happened for the rest of the match. That's fine with me. Perhaps I should go more defensive to save face. I don't think it matters though. Down a man because of an injury. I knew I shouldn't have made all my subs. Trincao might be struggling with a knock as well. His condition's down at like 50%. I mean, somehow we've played better since we've gone down a man, which is not ideal. You can see here, Nantes have just beaten Marseille 5-1. That's a crazy result around us in the table. Two teams who are, uh, well, competing really for the European spot that we currently occupy, although I don't know if we're going to occupy it after this. 3-0, a humbling defeat. Hopefully that Almeida injury isn't serious. But yeah, as you can see here, that Lyon game is not far away at all. So Nantes won 5-1. They move within two points of us, but do have a game in hand. You can see here, we played 22 games. It's worth noting that over this Christmas period, lots of teams have just now played different numbers of games to one another. But yeah, we're in fourth. Not not ideal, really. We need to try and bounce back. That goal kind of deficit is, well, eating into our goal difference as well, that 3-0 defeat. With that game being so close, the next one, I think we'll get straight into it. Our made is out for six to seven weeks. Ducasse out for four to seven days. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. That is not really what I want to see. We need to rest up all our players as well before the next game. Lots of players just struggling a little bit. So we'll give them rests for three days. The next game's in four days against Leon. I'm trying to remember if I've got any transfer dealings going on at the moment that we might be able to take a look at between games. I don't think there is. Um, we have got a little bit of a transfer budget. In fact, there is. There is one, and I should talk about it. Kurt Zuma on loan, maybe. Um, it would involve paying £20,000 a week, which is a lot of money. But I feel like he'd be a pretty blooming good player to get in on loan until the end of next season, if we can make the loan happen. He is apparently interested as well, which surprised me. But, um, well, you can see here he's ended up at Arsenal, Zuma. He was signed for £15 million at the start of last season. He's only made three appearances. Paul Rogers is expecting to leave. I could be honest, kind of forgot about the fact I promised him he could leave. Hasn't really featured in our team. Of course, we brought Roy in last year to be a kind of backup for us, you know, a bit of depth. Last year he played four games for us. This year he's just not been involved at all. So 
yeah, we brought him in on a free, so it's, it's not really a massive deal to let him go super cheap. Part of me really hopes the Zuma deal comes off. I don't know why I didn't mention... Well, I, I forgot to mention it. It's the reason I didn't mention it before. You can see here, I was looking at players uh, listed on the transfer list. Clearly, I can't afford Kurt Zuma's wages. However, we were able to sneak in a cheeky loan offer. Interestingly enough, uh, Will Hughes is on the transfer list. Why is he unhappy? Is he not playing a lot? He's not really performed that well. They loaned him to Udinese last year. What's the asking price? I mean, we can't afford the asking price. Eight million. Oh, you see, I can't really afford that. I wonder if we could loan him with the option to buy. The thing is, the wage is always going to be an issue. He wants 30 grand. Oh, he'd be a good little addition, though. Kurt, uh, would be Will Hughes alongside Kurt Zuma. If we could get them both, it'd be incredible. Um, right, you complain about the fact that I've promised to let you go. Get on the phone. Get, get out of the club poll. We don't need you anymore. Trincao has been showing big improvements in training. I mean, good to see him continuing to develop. 20 years old now. He had his birthday a month ago. We got him a cake. Didn't want a repeat of the Yaya Torre situation in real life. Good to see him just continuing to improve, to be honest. You know, he's a player who, um, obviously, we brought in for peanuts, really. £100,000. And he's just really made a name for himself this year. Not quite been on the same level of form as last year, but... I mean, 20 years old, playing regular first-team football in League 1. Uh, he's, been, he's been impressive for us, the Portuguese youngster. He has been attracting interest. Of course, he has got like a five, four- or five-year deal at the club still with an optional contract extension. Oh, okay. I did not know this was a rule in front. So, the Bombay, I was actually looking to loan out to FC Khan in our own division as a regular first-team player. However, you can't have more than seven players out on loan to domestic clubs in France. I did not know that was a rule. Interesting. Right, well, you live and you learn. We will we'll hopefully learn from that. That's a weird rule. I wonder why that rule's in place. If you're a French viewer, is that a new rule or is that a rule that's been around a while? I can't, I'm, I've never really managed in France in Football Manager, so it might be a rule that's existed since the begin, beginning of time and I just didn't know about it. But anyway, continuing on through this standard stuff, I hate these tactical advice things where... The staff just randomly start suggesting formations you've never played before. Like I, un I understand they want the, the desire to go on the counter. Now I kind of want to play on the attack. I think today we tried playing on the counter previously, and it just didn't really work for us. The Cass's injury is it a gashed head? Because that's the kind of injury I could risk him for. It's a bruised head. Bless him. We'll see how his match sharpness and condition are. Going into the Leon game. Uh, you can see a transfer window slams shut. Um, obviously, we still have a bit of money. Um, if I was to improve the team, I was thinking about where I'd want to improve it. To be honest, I'm really happy with the overall balance of the squad. Like, I wasn't really looking to sign Kurt Zuma. It was just the fact that he became available to sign. And when there's a player as good as Kurt Zuma available to sign, you consider it. Um, but... Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't feel like I have this massive pressure on my shoulders to spend the money we've got. Obviously, this year, we've not really added a ton of players to the first team. There's been a few players added, but a lot of it's been investing in youth for the future. And it's been working out in our favour, I feel like, that youth investment that we have made, that kind of commitment to bringing in young internationals from smaller nations. Got an offer here for Val uh, Valentin Gautier. Of course, uh, this guy generated in our club last uh, uh, well last intake. For people wondering about the academy and why there wasn't an episode earlier on this season, I've not mentioned this in another video. I should have mentioned it sooner, really. Uh, with the academy, I'm going to just do one a season, I think. Every March, we'll go through the kind of full shebang. I noticed that the views were starting to slow down a little bit, and I feel like there wasn't necessarily always enough to talk about each one. So talking about each youth intake, talking about the players who are developing well, um, be it on loan or in the reserves. I think doing that in one episode a year would be quite beneficial. But anyway, we've got this bid for Gautier. He's not for sale, so you can go away. Mattiello wants to discuss lack of first-team football. I mean, of course, this guy joined us from Juve. Do we have him set to, we have him set to be in first-team? Let's put him on rotation. He is really a rotation option for us. Romain Signs is wanted by... Uh, a club in Portugal. Uh, I think we've got that option. Uh, why have we got that set to automatically reject? Is that from when he was... That will be from when he was in the first team last year. I probably would be willing to sell him, to be honest. Because I don't think he's ever going to be good enough for the first team. Hmm. That might be worth considering. Can we offer him out? 
Let's just see if we can get 500k for him. He's young enough that a few French teams might be interested in him. Matteo wants to discuss lack of first team football. I've noticed this year, if you've got like good dynamics, you can often ask players to like drop people's happiness, uh, sorry, drop people's concerns like this, and it works a lot this year in FM. Definitely recommend using that option if you get it. You can see Matteo. He's not he's not upset anymore. He's kind of happy with where he's at. Panna's had a little word with him, taking him under his wing, and there's no more problems. It's beautiful. I feel like when you're in football manager and you're getting your players to like cheer up other players, it's like you're playing some master psychologist role. I can't imagine in real life in football, you know, a player comes up to you and goes, boss, I want to talk about my lack of first team football. And then the actual manager calls in another player and goes, oh, can you just have a word with him and make him happy again? Don't feel like that's what happens in football. It seems very manipulative. <laughs> but anyway, let's get into this game. Come on, Leon. I mean, it's, it's, it's the transfer window. All these continues take that little extra second or two longer. But I am desperate to get a result against them today, particularly after that last result. I feel like going on the counter at the start was probably a mistake against Monaco. I feel like our best bet is to start on attacking, and then if we feel like, oh, it's not really working, we need to go on the back foot, then switch to the counter system. Anyway, results being played earlier on today. You can see Nantes have leapfrogged us, as have Nice. This is with all of us having played the same amount of games. You can see Dijon also now equal on points with us. Uh, so Nice won 2-0, Nantes won 2-0, uh, Sporting Dijon, they haven't played. But yeah, it is getting really tight here for this fourth place spot. Of course, we are still really endeavouring to try and get it this year, but it is going to be tricky. And, well, you feel like the games now against some of the teams around us are going to be pivotal in terms of whether or not we can make it or not. Okay, offers made for signs. Um, let's have a look at this. 375k, that's a decent offer. Montpellier offered a bad deal, right? Reject. See, I feel like for Sands, 375k is actually pretty good. You know, you look at him. Last year, he was a good backup player for us, but he's never played in the first team. He's 20 years old. Maybe he could still fulfill some of that potential, but I just don't feel like he's ever going to be good enough for the first team. You know, you compare him to Pendant at the moment, who's not that much older than him, really, who is our kind of main left back. You can see Pendant's 22. The difference between the players is night and day, and so to get 300,000 for a player who, let's be honest, his impact in the first team is going to be minuscule at best, even if he does develop, just seems like smart transfer business, really. You know, I could hold on to Sands for a few more years, but his price is only probably ever going to drop. Okay, Kurt Zuma on loan. Do I want to do this? See, I was thinking about this. The name Kurt Zuma, it's a big name. And he's 25, and he's great. You can see we are going to be paying him a massive amount of wages. Compared to everyone else in the club, he's basically going to be getting paid double. Plus, we are going to be paying about £1.2 a year. You'll notice that we've got him loaned until, I think, the end of next season. So it's an 18-month loan if we want it. I mean, I really like Kurt Zuma in FM, but I should have scouted him to see what his pros and cons are. I wonder if he has injury proneness now. Okay. Okay. okay, this changes things a little bit because I didn't realise he had these injuries. So obviously in real life, he did get, if I'm not mistaken, a damaged cruciate knee ligament injury. He's had it three more times, twice last calendar year, and he was out for the whole year. Do I really want to loan a player who could get injured for that long? Um, the loan can't be terminated either. Ugh. This is why you should always get a scout report first. I mean, I don't even think I need the scout report. I think my mind's made up. He missed basically the entire calendar year of football last year. He's only been fit really recently. And that's probably going to be an ongoing issue because you can see he had it at the start of the save in game. So he's basically, in the last two and a half seasons of the game that I've been playing, he's been injured for a year and a half. That is just, I can't, I can't. Kurt Zuma, big name, but no, not with those injuries, not with that baggage. Always double check. I can't believe I didn't scout him. I just saw Kurt Zuma and thought, yeah, Kurt Zuma. I wonder if his injury proneness is higher in FM this year, because of course he did get that big injury in real life. Um, I can't remember what it was now. It was like a hyperextension of his knee, I want to say, when he landed from jumping. Clearly, that's kind of um, 
followed him in Football Manager this year. Okay, I, I feel like I've just dodged a bullet. Maybe that should be the title of this episode. Sometimes I struggle for titles for episodes that make people want to click on it. You know, I don't not clickbaity, but do, if you read "dodged a bullet," it sounds a little bit better than going "live com double header." Okay, Sergio Samper. So this is another thing. I've been looking at players whose contracts are expiring at the end of the season. You know, because obviously you can pre-approach them. I did look at Sergio Samper. I decided not to sign him. Um, there was another player as well who I can't remember who it was now. I'm probably not going to be able to find them here. But yeah, there's, there's been a few players who I've been looking at whose contracts were expiring. In fact, we can have a look here just quickly so you guys can see. I've been scouting a lot of players. Uh, contract status expiring in six months. Of course, you can offer pre-contracts to these players. So yeah, there's quite a lot of players here who I have been looking at. Players like Jeremy Boger. Um, who else have we got? Sergei Samper, who I already mentioned there's, there were some pretty good players here to keep a look at, but I think none of them are probably perhaps good enough for our team. If we get rid of Unrealistic as well, there were a few others that I looked at who are not realistic anymore. I saw like Marlon, who's decided to join Flamengo instead. Would have been a really good addition to our squad, the 24-year-old Brazilian. But um, yeah, unfortunately, he didn't want to come and play for us. Although I don't know where he would have fitted in the team. You know, he was the kind of player who I was thinking about signing... But would you play him at centre defence in mid or do you play him at centre back? And if you play him at centre back, a little bit like the Zuma transfer, to be honest, um, we have so many talented young centre backs. You know, we've got Diara obviously starting alongside Ruiz. Lacroix is kind of our third choice. But beyond them, uh, of course, we've got Le Bombe, uh, who is a 17 year old, really talented centre back. We've got Aliuta, who is currently playing for SM Khan, who has played nine league games for them this year, albeit he hasn't been that impressive. And even beyond that, you know, when you look at our reserves, there's more impressive centre-backs here. Some people like Sunday Dumaka, who, you know, their, their first-team football would be compromised, you know, long-term if we were to get in another centre-back like Marlon. But anyway, I'm just rambling along here. Some people love the rambles, some people hate them. I hope for the people who dislike them, they, they were able to find the skip button and skip their way through. But obviously, just sharing, sharing a little bit of what's on my mind, you know, some of the day-to-day -day decisions which don't necessarily get shown in live comms all the time. Right, we've got a bit of a situation here because Tukas is injured. I think our best solution is actually to play Martin as an advance forward. Now, he's not actually that great or an advance forward because of his finishing, but everything else about him is okay. Obviously, he's got four goals this year from centre attack in mid. We're going to move him into uncharted territory. Um, in terms of who we play at centre attack in mid in all of this, that's the big question. I think what we'll do is we'll play Moroni there and then we'll bring in Dougie to play out on the right. So, yeah, Moroni playing in his preferred position, actually, centre attack in mid. Pote then comes in as an inside forward. Um, worth noting, uh, Kitongo still not signed a new contract at the club. He actually rejected the contract offer from Rangers. I did look at giving him a new contract, uh, but it did break down the talks. He wants £12,000 still. I can't justify that for Kitongo, and you might have noticed over the course this year... I've kind of slowly been phasing him out of the team just because, well, why, why would you play a player who you know is not going to be here come next season? But anyway, this is the team we're going to go with. It's fairly similar to what we played before. We're going to play on the front foot to begin with. If we just look at Leon's recent kind of tip, well, you can see that team selection here. It's pretty solid with players like Polinio, Memphis Depay, Bertrand Traore, Bakayoko. That isn't the Bakayoko, by the way. It's the other back. Oh, wait, no, it is the Bakayoko. Oh, that's a... T I Wow. Okay, that's a good sign for them. I didn't think it was the Bakayoko, but it is. I mean, it's not exactly the most common name. They've got a really good team, actually, Leon. You can see why they're third in the league this year. I mean, they're a little bit too far away from us for us to think that we could possibly catch them. Even if we win today, we'll move seven points away from them and they have a game in hand. Um, they've only lost four games all year this year. And last time we met, they spanked us, if I remember correctly. Yeah, they won 3-0. But they did actually just lose their most recent game 4-0. So maybe there's hope. Maybe, you know, player fitness is a concern. Maybe they're struggling in that regard. If we look at selection info here, they've got some players who are a little bit tired. Maybe we can capitalise on that because, of course, we did rest our team going into today's game. This is the team we're going with. Obviously, playing on the front foot, playing on the attack. Um... Let's say, good luck, we need to go out there and try and make an upset. Or good luck, we need luck to get an upset. I feel like we, we, you always need some luck. Um, show me what you got tonight. Okay, Never, that, that's not a great team talk. We'll move on from that. Anyway, taking on Leon, away from home. 
I want us to play on the front foot. I want us to play attacking. I feel like last time when we took on Monaco, 3-0 flattered them a little, perhaps. They they were clinical with their opportunities. We didn't really create enough going forward. Let's see if we can create a little bit more today playing on the attack. You can see their team, they are struggling a little bit for condition, although it's not that different to ours, really. But anyway, early on here, 15 minutes gone, 60% of the ball in our favour. This is what I want to see. I want to see us take the game to them. And, well, we're going to try and get the ball up to Martin, of course. He only has 10 finishing. He's not quite Decas, who is on the bench for us. So if we get desperate, we can bring him on. But he's definitely not fit enough to start as Traore goes for a speculative long shot. It wasn't far away at all, though. And, uh, well, 25 minutes gone. We are keeping hold of the ball still. We're not really doing enough with it. And, well, they are on the attack here. Memphis to Bakayoko. Fakir. Don't let him get the shot away. Baku, I mean... It's a good finish. I'll give them it. Lovely goal. I don't think the keeper can really be blamed there. And we drop down to seventh. That's not what we want to see. But, uh, well, Leon, nicely worked goal, of course. Not really expecting to beat Leon or Monaco today. But, well, I was hoping we could at least get a share of the spoils. That's not to say we're out of this game yet. But going down a goal from a goal like that is a little bit disheartening. I think it's the fairest way to look at it. I mean... We can have all of this possession that we're having, but it's not really meaning a whole lot on the scoreline. Um, I think we're going to switch actually to go on attacking here now. I feel like we've tried controlling the game. We're not really creating enough in terms of shots on target. Let's get a few more men in the box if we can, as we do get it here. Moroni up to Martin. He's got the pace. Can Ricky Martin make something happen? He beats his man. Slide tackle comes in, but it goes to Panna. The long shot specialist goes to Dougie Pote. Can he get the ball? And he does. Lopez, unfortunately, gets there. For a second, you thought that we might have an opportunity. You know, going on the attack, going on the front foot, it seemed like it was creating something for us. Good pressure, actually, by our team here. Really trying to rush them into passes. And Dougie Boy wins it, then gives it straight back to them. Generous of him. And Leon on the attack. Can we stop them? Bakayoko pulling all the strings at the moment. Who knew he was a playmaker at heart? Win the ball well here, though. Moroni making a run on ahead of Martin. Big ball over the top. That was ambitious. Tete, what is that header? What is happening? Trincao scores. I don't know what just happened. Hashtag just football manager things. Hashtag stop using hashtags, Jack. We move up to fifth. I mean, what was that defending? Moroni here. I mean, it's an ambitious ball. Tete goes out. I'll, I'll help you out. And I don't know if Tete forgets how to run. But Trincal uses his pace, appears like Roadrunner out of nowhere, and tucks it away. Lopez unable to contain the effort. And you'd have to say we've kind of deserved that. As Bakayoko, see you later, hero turned villain. They are down a man. I mean, he's pulled all the strings, and now, now this has happened. They've taken off Tete at fullback. Are they playing three centre-backs now? How are they changing this? This is weird. What formation are they playing? Let's have a look. Marseille, uh, not Marseille, Lyon. That's awkward. Okay, they are playing a 4-2-2-1. I mean, if we concede immediately now that they've gone down a man, that would be very typical of me and my look, it feels like. As we try and get the ball forward, ambitious ball to Martin doesn't come off, and they're on the attack again. Obviously, they've sacrificed their centre attack in mid in their 4-2-3-1 system. But, I mean, they've still got a lot of talent going forward. And they're going to try and make something happen here. Harris hits it. Prevo, what are you doing in goal? It goes, it goes, it gets cleared. Panic over. Panic over. I mean, so far, so good. We've kept hold of the ball for large spells that game and left them chasing it. And tied them out. Bakayoko sending off is going to be big in the second half. We've only had the one shot on target. I'm going to tell the players I'm not happy. Which might seem a little harsh. But I want to get them fired up again. And... 1-1 one, one is okay, but not great. Looks like they've made some more subs as well. They brought on Mondragon for um, Fekir there. So they've only got one sub left. I mean, maybe we should just try and injure one of their players. Maybe we can have some luck in our favour as... Well, a cross almost hits the back of the net. Not seen that before in Football Manager ever. Anyway, we are still in this game. It's still 1-1. One, one. I feel like we're not really creating enough considering the fact that we are a man to the good here. How do I want to change things? Do I go to the more attacking Liverpool system, perhaps, where the centre mids get forward a lot more? I think that might be our best bet here. Um, I think we'll take off Moroni as well. He's been a little underwhelming today. We'll bring in Fuchs for him. Uh, I think we will keep playing Martin as a complete forward. He kind of has to play that role in the system. It will allow his playmaking potential to show through, but going forward he might struggle a little bit. 
But the Liverpool system is just, it, it's a very good attacking system, particularly for flooding out the midfield, which is something that we don't necessarily do with our normal 4 2 3 1 system. You know, we're a little bit more spaced out. Whereas this tactic will hopefully allow us just to get a bit more space. As Traore's through, he looked offside. The linesman didn't raise his flag. Clearly disagreed. I mean, 20 minutes left. I think it's time to bring on Ducasse and just give him a run out. Because, yes, he's got a bruised head. It's not a major injury. It's kept him out of the team. But on 80% condition, he should be able to last. And I don't feel like a bruised head is the kind of injury that is at risk of being, well, made worse. As Martin goes through, I mean, maybe maybe I should just trust Martin. Tackling Trincao taps it into the open goal. Do I keep Martin on? I mean, he looked quite good there. But at the same time, I kind of want to cast on because Martin's not been great. Nice build-up play here, though. Pote, a big ball over the top, yes, but it's a lovely ball. Martin finds some space between the centre-backs, hitting them on the counter, and Trincal just, just taps it into the open goal. A tactical change works wonders. I am going to take off Martin, just because he hasn't been that great today. A 6.9 rating, and to Cass, he's a difference maker, that boy. You can see both centre-mids, Mondragona... I'm going to call him Mondrag Dragon, Mondragon. It's better, isn't it? Let's be honest. We'll just call him the Dragon from now on. But um, he's injured, as is Polinio in the centre of the midfield. And they are playing two centre mids, both carrying knocks. That might cause them some issues trying to get back into position and also just misplacing passes. At least, that's the hope as far as we're concerned. Of course, they lost their last game. And they would be lo looking on to win this game as a response to that 4-0 defeat. They are down a man, of course. They have got quality. We have got to respect them. We've got lots of men back here, though. Well, we're trying to build from the back now. Let's not do anything silly, shall we? Prevo, ball up to Ducasse. He's bruised head. It doesn't matter. He can still win a header. Ball forward, though, now to Harris. Spread wide. Well, they've got a lot of men committed to this attack. Mapu whips it in. Back post. I mean, who just watched the ball there? Diogo Dalot. I don't want to call you out. It looked like you forgot you were on the pitch to play football for a second. And despite being a man down, they found the back of the net. Maybe Dicas wasn't the man to bring on. The ball whipped in here. I mean, Diogo Dalot needs to deal with that. Whatever way you look at it, that is a defensive howler by the right back. And despite having more shots, more clear-cut chances, we find ourselves even once more. I mean, how do I want to change things here? I think we'll change Dicas to an advance forward. We've got one sub left in us. Who do I want to bring on? I think we'll bring in Katongo for Pote. I think that's what we'll do. Try and get some fresh legs out wide on the right. There's another chance here. Surely not. Surely Leon aren't going to grab a goal here. 82 minutes gone. Big ball for Diara reads it like a book. Pendant to Pote, who is going to come off. I mean, he's putting another one of his big hoof footballs to Dukas. Can he finish it? No. No, he cannot. You wonder if without his bruised head, would he do a little better there? As that ch chance is wasted. I mean, a draw here would not be a bad performance. But given the fact they were down a man, it will feel like we've missed out. And well, let's not make, lose this game now. Ball whipped in. Harris near post. Nods it back. The Knight is there to deal with it in shining armour. to cast Kitongo on this right-hand side. Not had a lot of opportunities this year. Maybe he can earn his new contract. Dukas, finish it! Oh, we should have scored to make it 3-2. You thought he was going to... You, you would have put your house on Dukas to finish it. He's missed it. The ball whipped in by the Knight. Maybe the chance isn't over yet. Back post. Trincao's there. Panna. And they're going to get it clearly on. I assume. Yeah, they do. And it's out for a throw in. That was a chance. That was the chance. And, well, you would have wanted it to fall to Dukas. There might still be another chance here. Oh, my God. Diara, the centre-back, turns hero. Trincao with the assist. It's his first ever goal for the club, Diara. He was one of our first season signings. He's become a crucial little centre-back for us. I mean, take a bow. It's, it's free to... I thought the chance had gone. But it has not. And somehow, we are, we are winning this game. And suddenly, we can just switch everyone to defensive for the last minute of the game. And I have no shame in admitting. I just want to contain now and take the free to win. What a result this is. I mean, Leon must hate playing against us. It's the second time in two seasons we've beaten them from an unlikely position. 3-2 it finishes. Great performance. The pundits didn't expect this one. Yes, Bakayoko sending off paid off in our favour. Um, but well, you, can't, you can't argue with it. A last-minute winner always feels good. You can see Dijon drew 4-4. 
So they're struggling. It does move us within seven points of Lyon. They are they have got a few injuries as well. What how serious were those injuries? It doesn't look like they were serious at all, actually. Well, for a second I thought, oh, they're gonna have all these injuries to key players, but no. Looks like their players are gonna be okay and they were just little knocks that they picked up. But nevertheless, what a performance that is. And well, from two very tough games. We move back up into fourth. We get an unlikely, perf well, an unlikely win against Leon. Trincao, man of the match. What a performance by you, my friend. And, yeah, three points from an unlikely position. I hope you enjoyed today's longer episode. I never thought this episode was going to be 40 minutes long, but it's how it's ended up being. A contrast of two games, I feel like, but we do go marching on. A great performance by us there. In terms of when we'll be back, it may well be for the game against Nantes. We'll see how things are getting on. Um, but they are going pretty good right now. They're in fifth. We're in fourth. It looks like we might be battling one another for that fourth place spot. And yeah, hopefully it'll be a good little game when it comes. Anyway, guys, that's going to be all from me today. Let me know, did you enjoy today's longer episode? Would you like to see more of these? If you would, leave a like on the video. And yeah, other than that, it is me, Jack. And I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.